Okay. Hey, everybody. Okay, so my name is Constance, and um, <clears throat> I'm here to talk about uh, autism in the Black community. Um, before I talk about that, let me just get this second here. Okay, so before I talk about that, I just want to um, push this, if everybody can see down below, um, change.org slash Philly Public School for Autism. Um, if you could just go there, click it, sign the petition, share with anyone. Um, we That's just something that I'm pushing and um, our advocacy group is pushing. We also have a Facebook group page um, that I will share in this post so that if people want to add it, they can add it and get... Um, get involved in that so there is that and there we go okay so uh i've spoken to a lot of um our community a lot of black people about um autism within our community and when i say like our community i'll even reach out more so like black slash hispanic community um i've had people from you know different african countries different Islands, Jamaica, Haiti, um, just people that have said that, you know, we're all kind of going through and dealing with um, learning more about autism and not knowing enough about autism or not having enough support about autism. So um, <clears throat> we're kind of all, I guess you would say, going through the same thing. And this is a way to connect us, um, maybe help our relatives um, understand some things. Uh, you know, I'm going to say some things on here that I'm hoping people can just show a relative and be like, you know, this is what I'm trying to say, or this is what I, you know, I need you to understand, or, you know, you know, just be a little empathetic to what I'm trying to tell you about my child, or even about me, if you feel like you're an adult that may have autism, and that's something you need to, you know, work on, find out, go talk to a therapist, and go through that, um, but when it comes to your child, it's, you know, like trying to explain over and over again, kind of about your kid, and it's like repeating yourself, and you know, so it's just talking a little bit about that. So I have a couple of things I'm gonna go over, and this is gonna be um, probably pretty short, about 15 minutes. Um, so yeah. So the first thing I just want to talk about is support in the Black community when it comes to um, people having children with autism. So I just want to say um, everyone is different, but I want to say that support is a must. Um, if you're a parent a black parent with a child with autism, um, especially if you are a single black parent with a child with autism, having a support system is a must. And I'm saying that because, and I'm going to get real in here because I'm talking to my community and I need you guys to hear what I'm saying. I'm saying this because in our community, sometimes we may look at, you know, and this is maybe to the older generation, we may look at our child like, well, you need to handle your kid like this, or you need to do this, or you need to do that. Like when I grew up, I had to do certain things and you have to do it too, which is understandable. But when you have a child with autism, there are certain things that are required and kind of, you know, you may have to tweak who you are to um, help this child in this situation, which may be something that you're not used to if you're not, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're not used to, or if you don't know much about like autism, what it looks like, or maybe what you should do or how you should act. So the resources are definitely out there um, to Google and look up some things. Um, but yes, yeah, support is a must. Um, so <clears throat> I'll say, just give me a second here. So I would say that as a single parent of someone that um, has a child who is autistic, self-care is a must. So getting breaks is a must. So um, trying to maybe see if you can get a weekend out of a month. You know, I'll talk to parents in our community, just parents in general that have children with autism and just ask like, well, what do you do for self-care? You know, what breaks do you take? And sometimes they may not have the support so that they can necessarily take those breaks. And I'm just gonna say every parent needs breaks. You know, some people believe that no one needs breaks. Every parent needs breaks. But when you you know you have a child with autism, those breaks are really required. Almost doctors tell you, you know, therapists tell you, you know, almost everyone's telling you you really need to do this. But then if you look at your support system, then you may not be able to. So if you 
know someone that has a child with autism um, and you can be that support system or say you can watch their child a couple of hours out of them, you know, out of the week or out of the month or watch them for a day or if you can take them for a weekend if you have that relationship. Or for me, I would even offer if you can go to the person's house and even be there for a day instead of necessarily taking them because depending on um, what that child may you know, need, it may be better to stay in the environment that they're comfortable in possibly instead of taking them out. So then in that case, you would have to change possibly what you do, um, which is maybe expecting people to come to you and make sure you schedule this time then to uh, make sure you can help um, your friend or your family member that needs those breaks. So support is um, a must. So the next thing I wanna talk about is just what you say around children. Um, with autism. So I've had this conversation with a couple of people, but recently I've had this with one of my friends. And, um, you know, we just do have to be careful about what we say around our kids, just in general. But I know some people may not understand because if they see a child that does not look like they are listening or they understand, or if you have a child that is not verbal, who does not speak, like an autistic child, that's not speaking at like two, three or four, and you're just saying things like, well, why are they still not speaking? Or every time, you know, they come around, you're kind of saying the same things. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, this, all that. Those are things that you should really say, like in private or on the side, you know, because I'm just saying this because um, they can hear you. You know, everyone has ears. Like they may be autistic, but they're not deaf. And I'm saying this because when I went to the National Autism Conference and I was able to sit there and see a young adult um, who is on the spectrum, and I guess you would say he's more severe because he's nonverbal and he had a lot of movement while he was sitting there. You know, everyone was able to sit and he had a lot of rocking motion. But people were asking him questions and you would just, people would assume he wouldn't be able to answer that question. But because he spelled it on a device that he had and he, the person, his father that was sitting there next to him um, is the person that helps him with getting through what he has to spell, but he was able to spell out and answer questions. So people were asking him questions like, well, how do you feel when people say things around you and they feel like you don't understand what they're saying? And what he answered is, you know, I feel horrible. And for me, that really hit me because I just felt like, <clears throat> I just felt like, you know, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I'm always pretty open about what to expect, but I didn't know what to expect. And it really did kind of hurt me that he said, you know, he felt horrible um, because it's like, you know, you can only imagine what children, like nonverbal children kind of go through and what they hear around people. And they're just not given that chance to communicate. Now we are finding out there are so many ways that a nonverbal you know, autistic child can communicate where they can spell out and, you know, say what they want instead of, you know, communication is a thing. So if you can't say what you want, then you may communicate in a different way, which may be more aggressive behavior or maybe, you know, more behavior that people do not understand. So when you're lacking the speech to communicate, and that kind of comes with some autism too, then you're going to see other behaviors like, you know, kind of act a certain way. And that's just going off of what I've seen with my son, what I've seen with the people around me that I know who are autistic or who I grew up around um, or just things like that. So, so the next thing I want to talk about is um, men accepting the diagnosis of their child having autism in the black community. So I just want to give props to all the men who, you know, are at the forefront, who are making sure that they're there um, for appointments and, you know, being up to date on things and for the men who are making sure that, you know, the bills are being paid because it's, it's really difficult sometimes. Um, if two people are working, usually one person has to kind of, you know, maybe be more of a caregiver and a parent because they have to do a lot of things where the other parent may have to, you know, handle the bills and that may be a man or a woman, but right now I'm just talking about the men. So I just want to say like, you know, good job to all of those men. Um, but I also want to say, you know, I have had some women reach out to me and um, just talk to me about, you know, sometimes even in relationships, they seem to be 
doing a lot of the work. And I'm not sure if men realize how much work this is. And I'm not here to like make women seem like victims, black women seem like victims who are doing this. But if a woman is doing this and your child has like an OT therapist, a behavior therapist, like a speech therapist, um, if your child has to go to doctor's appointments frequently, you know, you have to think about all those things that that has to be done. And those things cannot not be done. So my thing is, if you're not doing them, then, and they are getting done, then who is doing them? The mother. Um, and not just doing them. I think it, it, a lot of acceptance of like, you know, black men just understanding what autism is. So I am going to get um, some black men and women who identify as being on the spectrum, who are adults to come on here and just, you know, talk and share some of their experience. But just to show that, you know, if you find out that your child may be on the spectrum or there may be things that they may have a disability or, you know, a, a delay in something, that's not anything to be like, you know, no, there's no way that can happen. There's no way or it's probably fine. Like the best thing to do is just see what's going on because in the first five years of life, that's the best time to, you know, if there's anything going on to um, get on track and really find out. So why not? Um, and then if your partner, you know, has done the work to say, get the diagnosis and now you you find out that your child does has autism, does, you know, is autistic then maybe it's time for you also to maybe, you know, step back and maybe write some things down or think, you know, what can I do to learn more? Like, you know, show up at a therapy appointment or if you cannot fully, you know, grasp maybe all the information because it is a lot, then, you know, ask the mom to update you, but then also, you know, ask her like how she feels about things when it comes to that. Because I am finding that a lot of black women feel almost lonely, even, you know, being in relationships or having the fathers around, but still not getting the support that they would say need, like the emotional support from them with just, you know, you guys both accepting, okay, this is a thing. Now let's both attack this thing. But if you both cannot accept, you know, that this is a thing, then you guys both can't even address what's going on. So um, I am having like a lot of women kind of come to me and just say, this is something that I'm experiencing. And so, like I said, once again, it's not anything that I'm trying to victimize black women with, you know, having to do the things that, that we have to do when it comes to having children on a spectrum. But what I am trying to say is we could use more support and it could start with, you know, the father. And if you are a father of a child who's on the spectrum, then, you know, take the time to learn some things, ask some questions, you know, maybe once a week, really sit there and talk to the mom, you'll find some things out. You know, every day, it's almost like you find out some new information. Sometimes that's overwhelming for a mother. And if she feels like she's holding on to all that information on her own, you know, she may then act a certain way. So I think it's important to, if it's hard for you to grasp that, you know, even couples therapy, because as a mother of someone, you know, on the spectrum, when I take them to see doctors, they'll suggest me to go see a therapist just to talk to them because of the different things that I have to do with him. And it is a lot. So they do suggest that you do stuff like that. So um, I would suggest that you guys need to even talk to someone just to get someone else's opinion kind of in there. I just feel like anything to get kind of people on, on board or more on board or more together is going to help, you know, our kids. And if we can all help our kids the way they need to, then that's how you know, we can collectively help each other. So, so I did talk about this before, but I just have this as a note here. So when you have a child on the spectrum, one person is like a caregiver and a parent usually. So um, I'm in a lot of groups and like couples, when it comes to people who are in relationships, you know, if you have a child who is on the spectrum and they have a lot of appointments and things that have to be done, that is almost like a job. One of the parents you know, may, you, that is their job and the other parent pays the bills. Um, so that is, that usually, that dynamic, you know, may work. I have met some parents where both parents work and one parent pays the bill, but then the other parent's paycheck goes to everything that they would need for their child because they may not qualify for SSI or they may not, 
you know, qualify for certain things and you still need a lot of money, like you really do need two incomes when you have a child on the spectrum, just in case they do need certain things. Um, so if you are a single parent and you already need two incomes just to be, you know, set and kind of comfortable, it is very difficult. So um, finding programs out there, you know, I, as I talk to more people and get on here and have more people, you know, talk, um, like I've had some people on here before on, on um, the podcast a couple of weeks ago, and we're going to have a healthcare podcast. So the more people that we get on here and talk in, the more we can find out some resources and how we can um, help each other out. So the last thing I want to talk about is just what it means to have a child um, who is autistic, at least to me in the black community, um, because I do feel like some people are, um, they don't really know how to feel or what to think. You know, everyone has a different point of view of what that is. So for me, the parts that are difficult, you know, there's there's things that are difficult that we all kind of understand. But then it's difficult when you're dealing with the healthcare system, when you're dealing with the education system, and you're black and you're trying to get resources. Um, like I went to the National Autism Conference and I met a friend there. But for the most part, you know, I was the only black person from Philly. So, and I had to pay for that conference. And the resources and information I got there was just so good. It's almost life changing, but I was the only one. So then it's like, I'm the only person that can take that back to my community and share that. Um, so what it means to me having an autistic child is you have someone that thinks just a different, thinks a different way. Um, maybe an engineer, if they like to build things. So if you see your child building things, they're putting things in a row or just doing certain things like that, um, you can look at it like, okay, well, let me get these blocks and let's build a castle. Or right now my son um, has some trains and has some stuff he can put together and make a whole kind of scene. And he likes that. And, and Austin runs around, he runs around, you know, this, he, you know, he moves. I have a trampoline in my basement because he moves, but also because he likes his mind being focused on something that is, you know, kind of ob objective, he can get through like a task and, and what he has, he's focused on that longer than anything else. So um, pretty much what I'm trying to say is, if you have a child that's on the spectrum, I guess it, it could be scary, it's confusing, but once you like accept certain things, then you can see, okay, this is what they are good at. You know, I can take this and we can figure out how to excel in this. And then also, you know, um, just learning more things about diet, about, you know, what our kids should be eating, um, what they should not be eating, um, juices and stuff like that, you know, making probably worse and just, you know, finding out more things. Um, so yeah, just accepting your child about who they are, um, and giving them to space the space to grow and to see you know the things that they're good at give them those things you know at a at a different level each time and just kind of watch them ex excel at that and you'd be surprised um like so for the school with autism um that i'm pushing to open you know imagine a lot of our children being able to go to a school where the ratio is a certain way because this public school for children with autism that I'm talking about is not, you know, going to be something that I feel like people think about like, oh, well, is he going to be forced to go to the school where he's not really going to learn anything and they're just going to put him in a room? And no, no, because there are public schools for children with autism out there in other cities and other states. It's just not happening in this one. And there are private schools for children with autism in the city and there are, you know, there are good services in the counties around us, but when it comes to, you know, in the city and our kids, you know, we're, we're, we're getting the, the, the money that's being filtered down and all the hands that are being dipped into it, our kids are pretty much suffering from that. And if you're a parent who works a lot, you know, you may not really see a lot of things until the end of the year where it's just like, why didn't we address this at the beginning of the year? We're addressing it at the end of the year. So having a school like this would really benefit our children. And they have schools like this that um, have a certain ratio. So there may be three adults to, I don't know, maybe seven children or something of that nature. Um, the schools are a little different. You know, they may be more for children that 
what they would want. I'm um, a school like this that I would like is for them to have like an outside kind of recess hooked up area, but somewhere they can go to run their energy off because my son, <laughs> I'm talking about him laughing that he needs to run energy off because, you know, he has a lot of it and it can turn into aggression if it's not filtered out a certain way, you know, which people do not understand or if he is dehydrated or not given water or is overstimulated. So these things that people don't understand about, say, our children, they would be under the, un they will be able to understand at the school because the school was made and set up for to understand children like ours. So instead of having to argue with, you know, someone or having to wait until the school fails our kids to sue them or to, you know, get them to pay for them to, to bust them into a school an hour away, we deserve a couple of public schools for children with autism all around the city. Like I said, we only have, I think, one public private school for children with autism, and that's Yale, and that's in Manioc. So we need them all around the city. And I would love to see the demographics of the children who go to Manioc because we need more for everyone, especially us. So I would love for you know anyone that's seeing this to please sign a petition, share it. Um, um, share, you know, if you, if you want to send me a message, you can share my information, share this with anyone that would want to speak, want to say anything. I do have some people that um, would like to talk. Like I said, I am going to also have a healthcare podcast. So if anyone, you know, wants to talk about, say, what they're going through with their child, um, you know, maybe in a more medical point of view instead of autism because those things do come with different benefits that a child with autism wouldn't get because of how it's different. Um, so my son has epilepsy, so I'm qualified for some things because he has epilepsy that a child with autism would not be qualified for. But some of the things that my child has, you can see in some children who are autistic. So also, if you watch that podcast, you may say, hmm, what she's saying about her child, I see that about my child, and maybe let me just ask the neurologist you know, what, you know, maybe possibly is this something that could be a thing. And um, so just sharing information definitely helps. So I just want to thank everybody that, you know, watched this. Um, I would love to get um, anyone on here that wants to speak about it, share their experience. Um, I did share some people's experience who messaged me. Um, <clears throat> I am going to have um, some advocates on here, some therapists. Um, so yeah, I was in a meeting a couple weeks ago. Um, and we were talking about how we could share this information with the Black community, like share more information about autism. So we just kind of brainstormed maybe churches, um, rec centers, places that we are, even bars, you know, places that we are just to share some information, like a flyer, like, hey, if you think your child may be autistic, this is a place that you can call. Or if your child is exhibiting these things, he may have autism. And if he has autism, that's okay. But it just means that we have to work on these things sooner than later, because it's better to, to work on it sooner than later, if you can. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for watching. And um, can't wait to talk again.